When we're getting on internet, we will have the computer and the router. Those two things are controlling our internal IP address and also the modem. Modem is the ISP, Internet Service Provider, provides the Internet Server with the external IP address. Click the Apple symbol on the laptop corner and choose About This Map. And then uh, when the About This Map pop up, you will see your map information. And then you have to click on More Info, the tab. And then System Report. And then uh, uh, you will, it will show you your map information. And on the left hand side, you have some option. So right here, you have to figure out your network. So click Network and then the locations. So you will see your map IP address just in there. So what is that? The map IP address have 12 digits number to let the router identify your physically locations. Mostly the IP address will have eight decimal number. And that's like the connector between your computer and the modem to let the server recognize your location and get through on the internet. And the modem, when it's ready, it will provide the internet service to you access to the internet. But right here, I also suggest your guy if you can use the Google Public Server, and that will help you easier and back up your network connections. So when all the information are ready, and the modem will send a request to the DHCP server for asking the TCP IP address to your physically local devices. So what is the TCP IP? So that is the permission from the DHCP server to allow you access to the internet for querying the information to the proxy server. For example, when you're Googling, you will put the question to the search bar and the query data such as the liquids contained to the packet and with your TCP IP address and seal it in safety and send to the proxy server. The proxy server will open the client request very carefully. If they don't have any prohibited data, it will retrieve back the data to the client with the response TCP IP address. The response TCP IP should be matched with the client local IP address so normally, the server won't be sent to the wrong location, to the wrong client. The server will seal back the packets and safety send back to the response TCP IP address client. So that means the response data will browsing to the indicate client PC. On the system preference, and then choose Network. And then click Advanced. Okay, on the Network, you will see some options right there. The first one should be Wi-Fi, and then the TCP IP, and DNS. And the rest of the four options, I won't be explain on this tutorial because I won't have very much time on it. So I will focusing the first of the three options that we always we usually will use this on the network configurations. Let's just go on Wi Fi. Okay you will see in in this uh, in my network you will see I have some options right there. Um, just depends on your guys if for example for me if I, I do have like several time will bring my computer to outdoor or to, to a, a, any, any another place to working with my computer. So sometimes you, they, will, they will be record, have some record in your network. For example, maybe I will bring uh, my computer to, to uh, go to school or maybe go to office or maybe some just uh, you know the server place that's or maybe you go to coffee shop to using your computer so you have better to check up your network if uh, sometime you have better do that you, you know why because if you have a lot of the network right there that it's some network you won't use again so because some some place you just temporarily get the network so you have better to delete it don't make your your network too complicated for yourself
You are better to remain which network should be your permanence network and which is not. And then you have highlighted it and click minus tab to delete it. That would be much better to make your network clearly and then um, click OK tab to make the confirm. At the bottom line, you will see your Wi-Fi address. That's exactly equals to your hardware map address. So you just check it out. Let's go on TCP IP network ID. So we can see we do have the two configure options. Let me explain the first one, IPv4. So what is that? This is Internet Protocol version 4. This is 32-bit IP address that we use commonly. This can be for 1 byte 8 to 10 decimal number. Mostly we'll use class C IP so that we separate by dot. The IP subsnet mask is 24 bits and consists of 4 8 bits optus, which is to use for the host ID attempt to communicate with another system, identify different groups IP addresses, and many devices on the same local area network as a LAN. The router ID that requests the IP address from the IPv4, IPv4 can support up to 232 addresses, um, all the, like every computer, cell phone, iPad, printer, machine, and every device request IP address. But however, they are finishing to be used in near future. So that's why IPv6 is developed as a replacement. IPv6, that is Internet Protocol version 6. The size increases extended to 128 bits. Use has a decimal numbers that separate by colons. It can support up to 2128 addresses with better security and network related features. That will need multiple IP addresses or permanent connectivity, simplify mobile and router network. The prefix length in IPv6 is the equivalent of the subsless mass in IPv4. It's expressed an integers between 1 to 128. When you click on DNS, that's automatically search your DNS server location. So domain name servers that is serving as the internet phone books, every single time when you visit the website, your computer performs a DNS lookup. It's very easy to add Google Public Server. Put 8.8.8.8 or 8.8.4.4. Those are the Google Public Server, but it's optionally. In case you live in the high-density population network, I would suggest you are better to add those on because that will help you enhance your DNS server connection. Or you maybe just keep your original DNS servers or maybe just add up with that. So click OK tab to make the confirm. And the last step is click Apply tab to done all the procedure. No matter you use which way to get through online, you maybe use your Wi-Fi network or cable or any Ethernet, it doesn't really matter. Normally when you uh, connect to the router modem and get your TCP IP address from the DHCP server. So normally you will access to the internet. You will get the proxy server response. So otherwise you have check out is anything problems, anything you didn't connect well to the to, to your devices. Right now you may be asked, oh, you able to get through on internet, you get a uh, server's response, but however, the HTTPS server, so uh, it's totally different things. When the client send a request to the server for logging in some security page, and the server will send a client request to the HTTPS server, HTTPS server maybe su suspends the client information, maybe the information is not matched. So for security, the server just refills the client logging in and send them the error message. Let me give you the real world example. When you go to the bank or school, you can't just only show your personal ID. You must have your bank card or student ID, otherwise the front door guard he won't allow you getting in.
However, sometimes you still have the problems like you just already changed a new PIN number but you forget it or you maybe just move in a new apartment but you forget to update your new address. You already changed a new cell phone number but you forget to update too and your order card are expired but you forgot to renew it. So something, something reason and something happened because your information has been changed. So this is the reason to let your login card be invalid. Actually, you can't argue with the security guard to back him allow you getting in. So you have to do is call back to the bank center or student center, verify your information have been changed, and then they will send back the card, the new card, and then let us to your permanent address. So after your verification and the activates, so you can able access to the security building again.